Hello friends, it's Dylan Young, Developer Advocate at Sitecore. And today I'll be introducing a new feature of Sitecore Personalize, which is part of the Engagement Cloud. This new feature called JS Modules has been added to allow a developer to create reusable functionality in isolated blocks of code. This allows for these reusable functions to be used in various places in Sitecore Personalize. Today, these reusable functions can be used in a decision model programmable. An example or a use case that may be relevant to most developers working with Cycle Personalize is that they might have a bunch of programmables written across multiple decision models. And those uh, programmables have a lot of common uh, type functions or methods that they're using uh, across all of those different programmables. Instead of having to do that with this new feature, now you can kind of abstract those common elements of your programmables out into a separate function and then call in to those functions from your programmables. So it allows you to stop repeating the same uh, functions over and over again. Now you can just create reusable JS modules to then be used in your programmables. This is just one example of what you can achieve with JS modules. So please join me as I explore JS modules in Sitecore Personalize. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the demo of JS modules with Personalize. Uh, in this case, I'm using a CDP and Personalize tenant uh, for this demonstration, but you could use, uh, as long as you're using a Sitecore Personalize tenant or a both a CDP and a personalized tenant, then you should be fine to go through these steps. I'm just going to show a simple use case, which I think for most uh, customers will relate to them uh, quite a lot if they're using uh, Sitecore Personalized and have a lot of programmables in their decision models. So to start out, I'm going to navigate on over to the JS modules inside the library. Before I click on this, I just want to quickly explain the difference between a template and a J or a module in this case, since there could be more modules in the future. Uh, templates are instances where you create all the assets for it. Um, and then when you create an item of that, so for example, a web template, when you create a web experience using that template, it recreates all those items into that web experience. And so it creates like an instance of that template. Uh, whereas a module is just going to have a direct reference to those uh, to the code that you're writing. So it's a little bit more important to make sure that, you know, you're not making changes to that code, because if you make changes to that code, you could break your decision model in this case, or the decision model programmables that you have. And so you'll see that there's a little bit more restrictions on a JS module. Um, that doesn't allow you to make changes to it uh, without recreating it. So we'll, we'll walk through that. So we'll go ahead and click on JS modules. Uh, I'm going to create a first my first one on this tenant, but I'll go ahead and create your first module. And you'll want to give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it common JS library. And there's kind of two strategies that you could go with these JS modules. You could create a JS module per function and then just reference those in wherever you need them. Uh, you have to keep a little bit more track of what, where, what your modules are and how they're being referenced and how they're being used. Or you could define a more common library. However, there is issues with, you know, if you need to make modifications to that common library with lots of functions in there, um, which is probably gonna be more likely, um, you're gonna have to duplicate and recreate those uh, quite frequently. So. In this case, I'm going to show the use case of creating a common JS library, although I'm actually just going to be using a function from this to demonstrate this. Uh, so once you've created that library or that uh, JS module, then um, you'll see a lot of different options. We can add a description. We can add some tags over here on the right. Uh, we can copy the friendly ID name. We can publish. We can duplicate we can even delete the JS module. We'll talk a little bit about those in a second. But the thing that you're probably more likely gonna be doing is you're gonna to wanna to write some code. So you'll click on the start coding option, and now you have a, an option to start writing code. So I'm gonna drop in some code that I've already written 
And there's a few things here. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. What I'm actually gonna use is this check for channel uh, option. So basically you pass it a channel. This could be web, it could be mobile, it could be some other kiosk or something like that. So I'm gonna pass that in when I write my programmable uh, into this function. And then that's, that's gonna be helpful for, instead of having to write this code each time in your programmable, uh, create this function, you now can just reference it, which is pretty useful. So that changed, uh, I'll just go ahead and save. You could test if you wanted to test some of your functions out. Once it's saved, and the saving actually shows up way down on the right side, so it's sometimes I haven't noticed it, but it has saved. And then if you want to publish it, you kind of have to go back a level and kind of you're kind of going out of the code and into kind of this wrapper of the code. And then now we want to publish this. And so it's important to note because of that difference between a module and a template, because when we publish this and it's gonna be used by an actual module or an actual programmable, or potentially in the future by a decision template or something like that, this creates a scenario where if you make changes after you publish it, you could break live functionality. So to protect the developer from that, um, it's given this restriction of once you publish this, you cannot make changes to it. If you wanna make changes to this, you'll have to duplicate that, that JS module, create another one. I, you could create it version two or version three of this same library. And then you can then uh, reference that in your code, which we'll talk about here in a second. So I'll go ahead and publish. And it's notice it's keeping reference about where it's being used. So that's useful. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, I didn't add a description. I didn't add any uh, tagging. Uh, so it doesn't have any of that information. Like I said, you could duplicate it if you wanted to, to create a new version of it and then, or kind of a new reference of it, change some code and then publish it again to do that. And then you can also delete it. You cannot delete things that are already referenced. So because this is has zero places where it's referenced, it cannot, or it can be deleted. However, if it's being referenced, you cannot. So we'll talk about that in a second. So with that done, we'll see that our JS module is listed here. And now we're gonna walk through the decision model creation process. And so I'll go over to the decision model. I actually have already created a decision model for this, but there's nothing in it. So we'll click on example V1 and you'll see that the canvas is blank. And so the next step to this is we wanna drop in a programmable because this is where we can reuse our JS modules. And so I've dropped the programmable there. I'm gonna click on edit and I'm gonna give the programmable uh, a name. I'm gonna call it guest in channel. And the output is the reference uh, we'll see in a second. I'll just call it result. And it's gonna be a Boolean uh, because I'm gonna be returning uh, true or false basically. Is that guest in a specific channel? And that's what's returned to the um, experience or experiment, whatever the case may be. And then that's used throughout. So the next part is I just wanna grab some code. I have written over here on the side, I'll copy this in. And I wanna show kind of a reference. So see what this does. This is going to call check for channel. This is in our JS module. Um, we're passing in web. So is, is the current guest in the web channel? If, and then it returns that value. So we'll see all that come through when I run test, when I test the canvas. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to just talk about how you reference your JS modules, which is important. Uh, so there's this new icon over here. It looks like a bunch of books, maybe a book kind of leaning on a book. Um, and if you click that, then you should see this new JS modules library open up. Now this lists all the published uh, JS modules that you've created. So because I've just created that common JS library and I published it, it now displays here. You can click on this little uh, external link icon and it will take you to that JS module in a new tab. So since we already know what this is, we're just going to click on it. And now it's what it's going to show is it's going to show you a little one, which means that you are referring to other JS modules. Now you can click more than one. In this case, we don't have more than one JS module, but in the case of the other scenario, instead of creating the common library and creating a bunch of module or uh, functions that are isolated JS modules, 
then you could refer to like five or six items here and then refer to them as you need them for certain purposes. Now that we've referenced that, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to do a test canvas. I want to see that this works. And so I'm going to use Ackman as a guinea pig here. because I like to do that all the time. And since he's identified on this environment and I'm not, I can't use myself. Um, and then I can just run a test canvas. And so you can see the execution works. I never had to explain what uh, check for channel was in this code. It's actually going out to our JS module. The code is there and referencing that and then it's executing successfully. So the full response you'll see is uh, outputs result equals false. I guess uh, Ackman is not in the web channel for some reason. But another question is what happens if you remove that reference? Does it then run properly? So we'll uncheck it, save it, and then we'll test it out. We'll use Ahmed again as a guinea pig because he loves being a guinea pig for me um, in my test. I'll do the test and you'll see, oh, execution failed. So basically, if you go in the full response here, you'll see reference error check for channel is not defined. So basically, uh, you need to have that JS module defined. So we'll go ahead and end, uh, click it again. And we'll save it. We'll just test it real quick. We already know what's going to happen, but I just want to make sure. Um, Achmed as the test and execution works. Full response is giving back outputs or results false. So that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty powerful features, reusability. Uh, using these JS modules, you can re reuse, you can write a lot of common uh, functionality and then reuse it across your programmables. So I will close this. I'm, I'm done with this example. One thing I wanted to show before I end this video, what happens once you have one referenced? So once you have this common JS library reference, you'll see that this module is used in one place. You can now view the list of where it's used. So one dependency found, and you can click this little external link icon and it will take you to that uh, decision model uh, programmable. So pretty useful thing there. Um, and you'll notice that if you try to delete this, it will say that you can't delete it until you remove those dependencies. So if you want to create a variation of this, what you can do is create a new version of it, create a new, basically duplicate that uh, JS library, create a new version of it, make the changes you need, and then use this dependency list to determine where the original module was used and then update those references. And then once you have those updated references, you can delete this, um, this item or you can leave it, whichever the case may be. All right, that concludes today's video. Hopefully uh, this is exciting stuff for those developers out there that are trying to create more reusable uh, functions in their cycle personalized tenants. Hope you enjoyed and talk to you next time.